Welcome to the mercy of Gurudev and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Panchatattva and Sri Radhe. So last time we stopped by chapter 4 in Adi Lila, text number 75, which was the beloved concerts of Lord Krishna are the three kinds, the goddesses of fortune, the queens and the milkmaids of Braj. And the milkmaids of Braj are the foremost of all. These concerts all proceed from Radhika. There we stopped. And now we will go on with text 76. Just as the fountain head, Lord Krishna, is the cause of all incarnations, so Sri Radha is the cause of all these concerts. So Sri Radha is the cause of all these concerts. The goddess of fortune are partial manifestations of Srimati Radhika and the queens are reflections of her image. It's a very interesting picture actually, reflections of her image. <laughs> Just some reflection. Not even the copy, it's just a reflection. The Can goddesses. Oh, sorry. In a weekend, um, maybe you were talking about difference and non difference, that it was a Krishna, but maybe this is also difference or non, non difference. Maybe the topic is similar or not. I'm not sure, but. I didn't get this question again, please. Um, okay. Um, I thought, um, I don't remember Saturday cross or Sunday cross, but um, I'm just listening and um, someone's talking that maybe the, top, the text was um, different and non-different. Ah, okay. Yeah. And uh, it was maybe from about Krishna, but um, this is like... Um, Reflection is same or a difference. In the same way different. The same and in the same way different. In the same moment different. Yeah, you, you may see like that. They are reflections. So, actually here, Radharani's glories are very nicely described. I think the heart of the author here is opening because I can feel I, I'm, I'm so inspired to read this. Maybe we try to feel how Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is giving a very nice description of uh, Srimati Radhika's glories here. It's wonderful. The goddesses of fortune are partial manifestations of Sri Madhi Radhika. So, partial manifestations. And the queens are reflections of her image. So, all the queens are reflections. The goddesses of fortune are her plenary portions 
and they display the forms of Vaibhav Vilas. So Vaibhav Vilas means something like expansion, opulences, enjoyment, for, uh, expansions for pastimes. And it also means something like uh, fascinating acts. And Vaibhav Prakash means something like exhibition or manifested forms or publication, just for to understand what actually is meant here with. And they display the forms of Vaibhav Vilas and the queens are of the nature of her Vaibhava Prakash. Like exhibition, you know what is exhibition? You open something for all. For all. It's not hidden. It's an exhibition. It's opening for all. It's for the public. It's a publication. So the Braj Devis have diverse bodily features. They are her expansions and are the instruments for expanding rasa. Text number 80. Without many concerts, there is not such, such exaltation in rasa. So it's all about different kind of tastes and expanding all these different kind of tastes and rasas. So everything is expanded by Radhika for her perfect seva to Krishna. Therefore, there are many manifestations of Srimati Radharani to assist in the Lord's pastimes. So everybody can understand. If you eat ice and there's just vanilla, that's fine. But if you eat ice and there's vanilla and strawberries and chocolate and uh, lemon and uh, nut and whatever, you know, so many varieties, then of course this is much more enjoyment. So Radharani wants to fulfill all wishes which <laughs> Mohan even doesn't know he has. So that's why she's expanding in so many forms. Among them, text 81, among them are various groups of concerts in Braj who have varieties of sentiments and mellows. They help Lord Krishna taste all the sweetness of the rasa dance and other pastimes. So under them are groups of concerts and Raju who have varieties of sentiments and mellows, different tastes, different characters, which Krishna has to deal with. So it's all for his enjoyment and different kind of tastes. In the purport, Prabhupada is writing, as already explained, Krishna and Rata are one in two. They are 
identical. Krishna expands himself in multi-incarnations and plenary portions like the Purushas. Similarly, Srimati Radharani expands herself in multi-forms as the goddesses of fortune, the queens and the damsels of Braj. Such expansions from Srimati Radharani are all her plenary portions. All these womanly forms of Krishna are expansions corresponding to his plenary expansions of Vishnu forms. We know that there is no Vishnu without um, a queen, uh, 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 hmm? Lakshmi, yes. There is no Vishnu without Lakshmi. So, and there are so many forms of Vishnu, and there are also so many forms of Lakshmi Devi, the goddesses of fortune. This is actually what Prabhupada is describing here. The plenary expansions of Krishna's personality are called Vaibhav Vilas and Vaibhav Prakash, and Radha's expansions are similarly described. The goddesses of fortune are by Bhav Vilas and the queens are by Bhav Prakash of Radharani. The personal associates of Radharani, the damsels of Braj, are direct expansions of her body. So we can see that there is a difference like the expansions of Krishna also. They are also different. As expansions of her personal form and transcendental disposition, they are agents of different reciprocations of love in the pastimes of Lord Krishna under the supreme direction of Srimati Radharani. So Radharani is the leader of an orchestra of rasa. You may see like that. Everything very nicely organized, different tunes, different sounds. But all are playing together perfectly for the transcendental enjoyment. In the transcendental realm, enjoyment is fully relished in variety. The exuberance of transcendental mellow is increased by the association of a large number of personalities similar to Radharani who are also known as gopis or sakis. The variety of innumerable mistresses is a source of relish for Sri Krishna. And therefore, these expansions from Srimati Radharani are necessary for enhancing the pleasure potency of Sri Krishna. Their transcendental exchanges of love are the super excellent affairs of the pastimes in Vrindavan. By these expansions of Srimati Radharani's personal body, she helps Lord Krishna taste the rasa dance and similar other activities. Srimati Radharani 
being the central petal of the Rasa Lila flower, is also known by the names found in the following verses. Text 82 Rata is the one who gives pleasure to Govinda. And she is also the enchantress of Govinda. She is the be all and end all of Govinda. And she is the crest jewel of all his concerts. The transcendental goddesses, uh, the transcendental goddess, Srimati Radharani, is the direct counterpart of Lord Sri Krishna. She is the central figure of all the goddesses of fortune. She possesses all the attractiveness to attract the all attractive personality of Godhead. She is the primeval internal potency of the Lord. Text number 84. Devi means resplendent and most beautiful. Devi Kohi Chyotamana Paramasundari Kimva Krishna Pucha Kridhara Prasati Nagari. Devi means resplendent and most beautiful, or else it means the lovely abode of the worship and love sports of Lord Krishna. Krishna Mai Krishna Yara Bittare Bahire Yanha Yanya Netrapade Tanha Krishna Spure. Krishna Mai means one who's within and without our Lord Krishna. She sees Krishna wherever she casts her glance. Kimba Premara Samaya Krishnera Swarup Tandra Shakti Tandra Saha Haya Ikarup Or, she is identical with Lord Krishna, for she embodies the mellows of love. The energy of Lord Krishna is identical with him. So the highest love actually is giving the fact that they are identical. I mean, even in this material world, we can see that some pairs, when they love each other, they look similar, they behave similar. Even here, there's some little reflection of that. And you may say, you cannot part them in two. They are do doing everything together. They are like one person. 
actually the highest form of love leads to the fact that actually Jadarani and Krishna, they are one. In the Leela, they cannot distinguish, distinguish between them. Radharani don't know if she is Krishna or Radha and vice versa. They lose their identification in their deep, deep love. So maybe that's a good meditation when we hear that actually they are one. Because it's not meant like you are one with Krishna in like uh, unpersonal understanding. This is very personal understanding. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, Krishna Mai has two different imports. First, a person who always thinks of Krishna, both within and without, and who always remembers only Krishna. Wherever she goes or whatever she sees, that's why she's called Krishna Mai. Also, since Krishna's personality is full of love, his loving potency, Radharani, being non different from him, is called. Krishna Mai. Text 87. Krishna Vansha Purti Rupa Kare Aradhane Atta Eva Radhika Nama Purane Bakane. Her worship, Aradhana, consists of fulfilling the desires of Lord Krishna. Therefore, the Puranas call her Radhika. In his purport, Srila Prabhupada is writing the name Radha is derived from the root word Aradhana, which means worship. The personality who excels all in worshipping Krishna may therefore be called Radhika, the greatest servitor. And here comes the good news for us. Manjaris sometimes are called the little Radhas, the little Radhikas. The little Radhikas because who is serving Radhika takes part in that big Aradhana, in the best service. That's our good fortune. And this is our fortune and our connection to the Goddess of Fortune. <laughs> Text 88 Truly, the Personality of Godhead has been worshipped by her. Therefore, Lord Govinda, being pleased, has brought her to a lonely spot, leaving us all behind. This is a text from Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 30, 
Text 89. Therefore, Radha is Parama Devata. Parama Devata, the Supreme Goddess. And she is worshipable for everyone. We remember, even for Krishna, she is worshipped. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. She is the protectress of all, and she is the mother of the entire universe. We remember that this text, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram, was written by Krishna himself. And he's saying, please, Radharani, give me your generous lotus feet. Because the poet Jayadev didn't know how to finish, actually, what he was writing, how... Krishna desires the lotus feet of Radharani. And when he went to take a bath, Krishna himself came in the form of him, guised like him. And he was writing this, finished the text for him. And when Jayadev came back from the bath, it was written there. So it's a statement written from Krishna himself. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. Please, Radha, give me your generous lotus feet. Generous, not just lotus feet. Generous. She is the guru even for him. The guru of love affairs. That's Radharani. Text 90. I have already explained the meaning of Sarva Lakshmi. Rata is the original source of all the goddesses of fortune. Or Sarva Lakshmi indicates that she fully represents the six opulences of Krishna. Therefore, she is the supreme energy of Lord Krishna. It's amazing. All good qualities of Krishna, all his six opulences, are coming from Radha. Even in the material world, we say something that the good things of a man are actually because there's a wife behind him, a nice wife. Is he, if he is behaving nicely, then we may think, aha, Maybe there's a nice woman behind him who's giving Shakti. Or at least we will think he had a good mother. So Sava Lakshmi indicates that she fully represents the six opulences of Krishna. So what is Krishna without his six opulences? Text number 92. The word Sarvakanti indicates that all beauty and luster rest in her body. All the Lakshmi's 
derive their beauty from her. So she is the source of all beauty and luster. Kanti may also mean all the desires of Lord Krishna. All the desires of Lord Krishna rest in Srimati Radharani. Because only Radharani is able to fulfill all his desires. And like we heard before, she can even fulfill desires that he doesn't know that he has them. He is not aware, not aware of himself without Radharani. Bhagavad Gita 10.15, we heard that also. Text 94. Srimati Radhika fulfills all the desires of Lord Krishna. This is the meaning of Sarva Kanti. Text 95. Lord Krishna enchants the world, but Sri Radha enchants even him. Therefore, she is the supreme goddess of all. Radha Purna Shakti Krishna Purna Shakti Man Dui Vastu Bedanai Shastra Paraman Sri Rata is the full power and Lord Krishna is the possessor of full power. The two are non-different as evidenced by the revealed scriptures. They are indeed the same just as musk and its scent are inseparable or as fire and its heat are non-different. Radha Krishna Aiche Sada Eka Isvarup Lila Rasa Aswadite Dhare Dui Rup Thus Radha and Lord Krishna are one, yet they have taken two forms to enjoy the mellows of pastimes. So we may see that together they are the highest form of love. And by separating they can exchange this love. The full round love, because it needs it needs someone who is getting, enjoying the love, and someone who gives. Otherwise, there is no exchange. Then it's impersonal. Text 99 to 100. To promulgate Brahma Bhakti, devotional service in love of Godhead, Krishna appeared as Sri Krishna Chaitanya with a mood and complexion of Sri Radha. Thus, I have explained the meaning of the fifth verse. 
So actually the conclusion is this love has to be distributed. It's the highest. So this Prema Bhakti has to, to be given to everyone. That's the point. How could love in person not distribute this highest taste of love? When you love, you cannot be a miser. <laughs> you have to give to everyone. But therefore, we need first feelings because love can only be exchanged on the base of feelings. There are no feelings. You don't want to distribute. You don't want to give to others. But pure natures, they always want to give to others. What to speak of pure love in person. To explain the sixth verse, I shall first give a hint of its meaning. Text 102. The Lord came to propagate Sankirtan. That is an external purpose as I have already indicated. So what actually the Lord came to propagate Sankirtan? What is Sankirtan actually? Sang means all together, right? Sangha, all together, come all together. And what, what, what to do together? Praising the highest loving exchange, singing about the highest loving exchange, take part in the highest loving exchange. This is actually Sankirtan. That's why it is praised and praised and praised again and again and again. Because this is all about. This is our luck. It's the best for us. It's the best for everyone. So Sankirtan is the essence. For us fallen souls here in the material world. Just come together. Glorify. The love exchange, the loving exchange of Radha and Krishna. This is Sankhita. There is a principal cause of Lord Krishna's appearance. It grows from his own engagements as the foremost enjoyer of loving exchanges. That most confidential cause is threefold. Swarup Damoda has revealed it. So very confidential. Shh. Don't tell to anyone. Shh. Swarup Goshani is the most intimate associate of the Lord. He therefore knows all these topics very well. Text 
text 106. The heart of Lord Chaitanya is the image of Sri Radhika's emotions. The heart of Lord Chaitanya is the image of Sri Radhika's emotions. Thus, feelings of pleasure and pain arise constantly therein. So Sri Radhika's emotions are within Lord Chaitanya's heart. That's why feelings are going like waves all the time. So purport of Srila Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya's heart was full of the feelings of Srimati Radharani and his appearance resembled hers. And his appearance resembled hers. Understand? Who appeared? Swarup Damoda has explained his attitude as Ratha Bhava Murti. The attitude of Radharani. One who engages in sense gratification on the material platform can hardly understand Radha Bhava. But one who is freed from demands of sense gratification can understand it. Radha Bhava must be understood from the Goswamis, those who are actually controllers of the senses. It's such a wonderful point Prabhupada is making here. Because he's giving the way, how to get it, so easy. First, he's stating one who is busy with sense gratification cannot understand. But if you want to be free from it and understand, there's a way. You have to hear and learn from the Goswamis because they actually controlled their senses through this process they want to give us. Now we may see, okay, they were completely, they are not Nitya Badas like we, they are Nitya Siddhas. But actually they came to give us the process. And that's why they acted like we, like Nitya Badas, eternally bound by the material world, Bada, Nitya, Bada. But they were not Nitya Badas, Nitya Siddhas, eternally servants of the highest love. So they could actually show us how to come there. And this is what they did because of the wish of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he empowered them fully. So if we just follow them, it's actually very easy. Give up all your ideas, what enjoyment or luck is or what love is, whatever. Give up all this and just see what they think what love is and what are the right things to do. So it's actually very easy. Just follow, not imitate, follow. And then you will come there. So Prabhupada is giving this just in one sentence here. These transcendental affairs can be understood on two platforms. One is called elevated 
and the other is called super elevated. The loving affairs exhibited in Tvaraka are the elevated form. The super elevated position is reached in the manifestations of the pastimes of Vrindavan. So we can see Prabhupada is giving, in such short sentences, he's giving everything, all the complete understanding. Tvaraka, yes, elevated, but super elevated. You want the highest? Go to Vrindavan. Forget about Tvaraka. So Prabhupada was giving everything. Unfortunately, I didn't understand before I met Gurudev and he was actually explaining what Prabhupada was writing here and what he mentioned here. We need a person who is in this feeling and he can guide us. Then we understand what is the way of the six Goswamis and then we can follow under the guidance. Otherwise, we may not even understand the six Goswamis mood. From the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, an intelligent person engaged in pure devotional service can understand that he always felt separation from Krishna within himself. In that separation, he sometimes felt that he had found Krishna and was enjoying the meeting. The significance of this separation and meeting is very specific. If someone tries to understand the exalted position of Lord Chaitanya without knowing this, he is sure to misunderstand it. One must first become fully self-realized, otherwise he may misidentify the Lord as Nagara or the enjoyer of the damsels of Braj, thus committing the mistake of Rasabasa or overlapping understanding. This is such a wonderful statement. Gurudev would say, underline. Actually, the whole, the whole verse with the explanation has to be underlined here. Prabhupada is telling me. I have to make audio recording of your sweet what we are melting like anything by this finger. Your Chaitanya Chaitamrit classes and Uddhava's Bhagavad Gita classes, I never always want to listen that and to live in that consciousness. What a beautiful Prabhupada explaining and telling. You both are explaining us. We feel very fortunate to listen the words from Chaitanya Chaitamrita, my dear, and Bhagavad Gita. Thanks for doing this. Gurudev, thanks that you are giving us this possibility that we can learn and grow. 
Without you, no, I didn't you understand are, anything. You are giving to me that I can grow and learn more. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> so it's such an important statement here that without fully realizing that means if you are not in your siddha how you can understand the position that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not Krishna he is not the Inagara not the enjoyer Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radharani, and this is stated by Srila Prabhupada. The founder of ISKCON, he is the Acharya. Everybody should understand that, who wants to follow him. It's such an important point because he's writing here, otherwise you may misidentify the Lord as Nagara and thus committing the mistake of Rasa Basa. Rasa Basa, overlapping of different Rasas. So no one can say that Srila Prabhupada didn't give us everything. He gave. If we understand, that's the point. That's the question. If you have any questions, comments or something, please interrupt me. Otherwise, I will just Go on. It's such a tasteful nectar here. Text 107. In the final portion of his pastimes, Lord Chaitanya has, uh, was obsessed with the madness of separation from Lord Krishna. He acted in, uh, in erroneous ways. Oh, I think it's crazy ways or something like this. I don't know this word. But from the sentence, I understand like this. It's uh, unsuspected ways or something like this. And he talked deliriously, like <laughs> someone who is in delirium, <laughs> completely drunk with love. And this is what he wants to give us. It's amazing. This is his gift for us. Nitya Badas. Don't mind. Here is the highest taste, the highest. That's why Prabhupada was actually always talking about the higher taste and the highest taste. This is the highest taste which we can have as a soul. And he wants to give us just free. Text 108. Just as Radhika went mad at the sight of Uddhava. Hmm? Uddhava is very lucky. When Radhika saw Uddhava, she thought, my Krishna is coming because he looks very similar. So Radhika went mad 
And like this, Lord Chaitanya was obsessed day and night with the madness of separation. Those under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can understand that this mode of worship of the Supreme Lord Krishna in separation is the real worship of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada is writing here in the purport. Again, what kind of words? He is giving the essence. Those under the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can understand that his mood of worship of the Supreme Lord Krishna in separation is the real worship of the Lord. Because he is in the mood of Radha. When the feelings of separation become very intense, one attains the stage of meeting Sri Krishna. So first, we have to be in, separa uh, in separation, we have to be in this intense feeling that we are longing for something, otherwise how we can reach, even in the material world, if you are not in this intense feeling that you are longing for something, how you can reach? We don't have any power to reach, because if there is coming a little thing which is obstructing your way, then you will leave without longing, without having this feeling, I need it, I really need it. So Rati is coming up when we are in separation, otherwise not. And Rati is the driving power who is driving us to our goal, actually. So, my dear Rati Manjari, please give all of us Rati. This is my prayer. Text 109. At night he talked incoherently uh, incoherently in grief with his arms around Swarup Damodar's neck. Just imagine that picture. Radharani is hanging on the neck of whom? Who is Swarup Damodar? A friend. Lalita or Vishaka, actually there are two statements we will hear later on also in these texts. Lalita is one statement and there is another statement that actually Vishaka. So she is a very dear friend, very, very dear friend, a portion of Radhika herself actually, expansion, one of the first expansions hanging around the neck, crying. He spoke out his heart in ecstatic inspiration. What a scene. And whenever a particular sentiment arose in his heart, Swarup Damodar satisfied him by singing songs or reciting verses. Of the same nature. To analyze these pastimes is not 
is not necessary now. Later I shall describe them in detail. So, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami saying he will not go in detail now, but describe it later. Formerly in Braj, Lord Krishna displayed three ages, namely childhood, body, uh, boyhood and adolescence. His adolescence is especially significant. Parental, parental affection made his childhood fruitful because he enjoyed with Mother Yashoda. So that made the childhood fruitful. His boyhood was successful with his friends because he was playing with his friends. In the youth he tasted the essence of rasa fulfilling his desires in pastimes like the rasa dance with Srimati Radhika and other gopis or Srimati Radhika's expansions. In his youth, Lord Krishna made all three of his ages and the entire universe successful by his pastimes of amorous love like the Rasa dance. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is really enjoying these texts, right? You can hear this here again. In his youth, Lord Krishna made all three of his ages and the entire universe successful by his pastimes of amorous love like the Rasa dance. He is also giving a hint that actually in this Rasa, the other Rasas are included. Text 116 Lord Madhusudana enjoyed his youth with pastimes on autumn nights in the midst of the jewel-like milk maids. Thus he dispelled at the misfortunes of the world, uh, dispelled all the misfortunes of the world. So by enjoying in the autumn nights, as a side effect, he dispelled all the misfortunes of the world. So it's not the main point he came, right? It's just a side effect. Lord Krishna made Srimati Radharani close her eyes in shame before her friends by his words relating their amorous activities on the previous night. Their amorous activities are over and he actually is standing there and telling them to his friends. And Radharani gets ashamed, of course. She doesn't want that they are just openly spoken out. So Radharani is in shame. Actually, it's it's a very wonderful 
scene actually because they are playing like like us navalila it's like they are just humans and this is actually so astonishing that's why it is described here again in detail it's amazing then he showed the highest limit of cleverness in drawing pictures of dolphins in various playful sports on her breasts so actually he also want to give a picture of what happened but how you can do this openly but he's very clever He's drawing pictures of dolphins in various playful sports on her breasts, giving a hint and enjoying it. A Morris play uh, uh, Morris games and also in a very uh, humorous way actually a very humorous way Parihasras in this way Lord Harry made his use successful by performing pastimes in the bushes with Sri Rata and her friends in the bushes of bushes, bushes, I don't know. Everybody knows. In this way, Lord Harry made his youth successful by performing pastimes in the bushes with Sri Rata and her friends. Like humans would do when they are in love and they cannot meet openly, right? This is amazing. Acting like us and giving us the highest taste. Astonishing. Text 118. O Purnamasi, if Lord Hari made not, had not descended in Mathura with Srimati Radharani, this entire creation and especially Cupid, the demigod of love, would have been useless. O oh, Purnamasi, if Lord Hari had not descended in Mathura with Srimati Radharani, this entire creation, and especially Cupid, the demigod of love, would have been useless. What more to say? Text 190 to 120. Even though Lord Krishna, the abode of all mellows, had previously in this way dewed the essence of the mellows of love, still he was unable to fulfill three desires. Three kind of desires, although he made efforts to taste them. I shall explain his first desire. Krishna says, I am the primary cause of all rasas. I am the full spiritual truth. And am made of full joy. So he's saying, I am Sachit Ananda. But 
The love of Srimati Radharani drives me mad. You are self-satisfied. You have everything you can have. You are Sat, Chit, Ananda by nature, fully. But then Srimati comes and drives you mad. Srimati Radharani is driving him mad. And this is actually the highest enjoyment if somebody is able to drive you mad through love. Otherwise, for what you are God? I do not know the strengths of Radha's love with which she always overwhelms me. He cannot understand Radharani's love, but he wants, he has this wish to at least taste it. The power of Radha's love is more powerful than all his powers. It's the highest power. Nothing more powerful than Radha's love. So he wants to get an impression. The love of Radhika is my teacher. Radhikara Prema, Guru, Amishishya Naj. Ah, sorry. Amishishya Naj. Radhikara Prema, Guru, Amishishya Naj. Sada Ama Nana Nritje Nachaya Udbhat. The love of Radhika is my teacher, and I am her dancing pupil. I am like a puppet dancing under the power of her love. Her prema makes me dance various noble dances. Her prema makes me dance various noble dances. Why he's performing the Radha dance, a Rasa dance? Her prema makes me dance various noble dances. O oh, my beloved friend, Vrinda, where are you coming from? This is actually a statement which is underlining the text which we read. I am coming from the feet of Sri Hari, is the answer of Vrinda. Where he is? In the forest of the bank of Radhakon. What is he doing there? He is learning dancing. Who is his master? Your image, Radha, revealing itself in every tree and creeper in every direction, is roaming like a skillful dancer, making him dance behind. So it's proved. Radharani 
is making him to dance. This is a text from the Govinda Lilamrita 877. So text 126. Whatever pleasure I get from tasting my love for Srimati Radharani, she tastes 10 million times more than me by her love. Whatever pleasure I get from tasting my love for Srimati Radharani, she tastes 10 million times more than me by her love. This is a very clear statement. Whatever pleasure Krishna gets from his love towards Srimati Radharani, whatever pleasure he gets from that taste, it's just a small parture because Radharani tastes 10 million times more her love for him. That's why Krishna wants to taste that. If you eat something and you think, this is the greatest thing I ever ate, and then somebody says, oh, this is nothing. I have something, it's 10 million times better. Then you want to taste it. So this is the real point why Krishna is appearing in the form of Lord Chaitanya. He wants to taste the love Radharani has for him. Just as I am the abode of all mutually contradictory characteristics, so Radha's love is always full of similar contradictions. We understand Krishna is not straight, right? There are contradictions in his character, always. He says, I will not fight on the battlefield, and then he fights. What is this? He's a liar or what? He says, I don't steal butter. The gopis want me to take this butter. So many different kind of understandings you can have, and you will see contradictions. So in the same way, Radha's love is also similar from these contradictions. She is saying, no, no, don't touch me, go ahead. But inside she feels, yes, yes, please touch me. So that means, from the eyes of a lover, my Rata is similar to me. She has a similar character.
But that's just one point why I love her. Rata's love is all pervading. Rata Brema Vibhu Yara Batite Nahitani Tatapi Sekshane Kshane Bodaye Sadai Rata's love is all pervading, leaving no room for expansion. So in all existence, nothing is outside of Radharani's love. In all worlds, material world or spiritual, in all worlds, you will not find an inch. You will not find a place to put one needle inside which is not pervaded by her love. Her love is everywhere. We are swimming inside of her love. We can see this everywhere if we have the eyes to see. Beginning from the nature up to the spiritual sky, everywhere is Radharani's love. There is no place for expansion because it is already everywhere. What doesn't mean that she can expand her love in the games with Krishna. That's another point. They are always expanding. But the love is already everywhere. And this is the contradiction. Still, it is expanding constantly. So although the love is already everywhere in full power, it's expanding constantly. Achintya beda abeda tattva. We know that. So it's amazing. In Krishna's case, it's amazing, but in Radharani's case, it's even more amazing. Love is everywhere already in full extension, but still it's expanding constantly. There is certainly nothing greater than her love. But her love is devoid of pride. That is the sign of its greatness. So although she has the greatest love, there is no pride. Radharani is giving enjoyment to Krishna in all kinds. And if we think that she is jealous, we may not understand her mood. She is not upset when he comes from Chantravali's kunj because he was with her and she could not enjoy with him. That's not the point. No. She understands Krishna cannot be fully satisfied. He was just by Chandravali. He cannot be fully satisfied. This is her anger. This is her feeling. He is not satisfied and the night is already over. What to do? But he's also not satisfied. If she's just 
giving. She has to reject him first. Go ahead. What are you doing? Where are you coming from? You were enjoying with another woman? Go to her. Let her please you. Actually, she's saying, <laughs> I know that she cannot. And actually, she's saying in his words, if you want to be satisfied, then you have to give some good prayers now. <laughs> but in the same time, she's saying, you don't have to pray now. Go, go. No words can make everything good now. Go. But in this way, she is telling, yes, try it. Try to please me, then I will please you. Because Krishna loves this more than to be in sexual union with her. This is his real pleasure. And that's why when he's telling that Radharani is actually similar in character. This is like he's raising her love. Text 130 Nothing is purer than her love. But its behavior is always perverse and crooked. What means a perverse or perverted? Actually, if you have an original thing and you pervert, you are going another way, unknown way, not the known way. It's perverting from the original. And crooked. So that's why even Krishna cannot see what are her plans in the next few, let's say, minutes. And in this way he will be astonished always. And this only Radharani can give to him. She can astonish him. She can astonish him in every moment. By her nature. That's why all glories to Radha's love for Krishna, the enemy of the demon Mura, although it is all pervading, it tends to increase at every moment. Although it is important, it is devoid of pride. And although it is pure, it is always beset with duplicity. What a wonderful description of Radharani's love here. It's from the Dana Kamudi 2 of Srila Rupa Goswami. All glories to Radha's love for Krishna, the enemy of the demon Mura, although it is all pervading. It tends to increase at every moment. Although it is important, it is devoid of pride. And although it is pure, it is always beset with duplicity. 
That's the wonderful nature of Radharani's love. Sri Radhika is the highest abode of that love, and I am its only object. What a lucky guy, huh? Eh? He is the only object of this love. But actually, the Manjuris are even more lucky. Because they are on the side where Krishna wants to be. He wants to understand that love. He wants to get a glimpse of this love. But the Mandaris, they are already there. And this is the highest gift. The Mandaris, they have even a better position all the time, not just here and there. They don't have to appear in the material world to get this, they have always this possibility to feel it together with Radharani, to be the small Radhika. Text 133, I taste the bliss, no, I taste the bliss to which the object of love is entitled. But the pleasure of Radha for the abode of that love is 10 million times greater. And even in the Bible it is said, the nature of the soul is to give, and this giving is the greater enjoyment than to take. So even though Krishna is the highest person who can take, still he takes. That's his role. But Radharani is the highest giver. So she has the highest enjoyment. That's the logic of love. 10 million times greater. My mind races to taste the pleasure experienced by the abode, but I cannot taste it. Even by my best efforts, how may I taste it? Krishna's mind races to taste the pleasure experienced by the abode of love. But I cannot taste it even by my best efforts. I heard that he should be God. If this would be, it should be actually possible for him, right? By his best efforts, but not. So that means without Radharani, he's not even God. Just a joke. Even his best efforts cannot 
come to that point. So how may I taste it? That's a very nice end for today. He's very greedy. That's his rati. How may I taste Radharani's love? The astonishing thing is, for the jiva, he made it so easy. So even for him, it's more complicated. So if anyone has a question or some commentary or whatever, I think it's, uh, yeah, 2.50 was quite some information today, but actually emotional information. Very beautifully, you, you're taking us very deep. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop it. It's, it's very sweet to listen to you and uh, really helps to go more deeper in the understanding of Chitani Charitamrita because it's so dear to Gurudev also, you know, and actually through Gurudev's mercy, we are understanding much more clarity is coming now when reading and listening and, and, and sharing. And when you are explaining, you know, it really feels like, you know, that this is coming through that put an arrow in you. And now, you know, you're, it's really pouring out. So thank you so much. Um, I just had one small, tiny feeling now when uh, you were talking about this, uh, you know, that Krishna is really complicated. And we love complications, right? We want it tough. We want it difficult, no? We want to climb the mountain without oxygen. You know, we want to prove we can do it. But actually, it's so easy made. You know, the Goswamis, you know, Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, they made it actually very easy for us. But we still don't want to accept it easy, no? We love the complicated way because he's complicated. Krishna, no, he's mm -hmm. Trivanga. So if, if you follow Krishna, then you will you will go on that path. You will go on the Gyan Mishra Bhakti path. You know, you want to always feel more and more information. But if we follow the Mandaris, the Dasis path, then we see actually we only have to live in feelings. We only have to accept, you know, that our true nature is to be in feelings. And Krishna understood this. In the end, he see, hey, this is she's my prema guru. I am her shishanat. Actually, she's making me dance, like spinning me like a disc around. You know? so, but his nature is to be a thief, so he cannot go straight and catch it from her. He has to steal it from her. So Gurudev put this very beautiful sentence on the temple. When you come, you will also see, you've seen it maybe, no? Like uh, he stole her complexion and her bhav to become Goranga. He actually stole it from her, you That's know? And nature. the thing is, his nature, and Gurudev said he's three banga. So when you want to get butter, Gurudev always said, if you take a knife, you can get a little bit butter. But if you take like a crooked hook, you get the entire thing. So he is like this. In order to get everything from her, he has to be crooked. And to show us this, also Mahaprabhu came, you know, and he came, he stole it from her. Mm -hmm. So that's really the beautiful, uh, actually, Jitaita and Rita is actually such a beautiful meditation on our Swamini's unlimited love and compassion. 
and that even Krishna understands it, he had to come as Mahaprabhu, like he had to come in the form of Mahaprabhu with her mood to really taste it. Thank you so much, Maharani so I I have to thank you all. I have to thank Gurudev that he is giving me this opportunity and we can dive in together. This is like being in Vrindavan. Thank you so much. I want to live in this world. Please help me. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you for your mercy. Kill your sweet Chaitan Chaitamrit. And the Mahaprabhu passed. Thank you, my dear. Very inspiring. Your words are inspiring to me. I'm very proud of you. I just remember when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was talking uh, with Rai Ramananda. So, actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was talking through him and asking him. So, in the same way, I see it like that. I'm just moving the mouth, but the flow is coming from you. Thank you very much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Gauravani. Thank you so much. It was so amazing. I. I never experienced such a feeling, even if I, I read before Chaitanya Charitamrita. You was reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita, right? All the time. Yes. 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 Finally, the first time. I, I always have had this problem to share with somebody, to find somebody to share Chaitanya Charitamrita before. No. So finally, today, my desire is fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> By the mercy, of the mercy and the presence of Gurudev and all the devotees, really nectar. This is the mercy of Gurudev and all the devotees here. So thank you very much. And please pray for me that I may really uh Bring this on the road, not just hear it and talk over it, but really bring it on the road, the power of love to that the wheels bring me to Radharani's lotus feet. <laughs>